a few weeks ago, someone asked me, do people recognize you when you walk down the streets of Amsterdam? And the cognitive dissonance was just so enormous because mostly people don't even recognize me when I walk down the hallway at work. <laughs> so I'm not at all famous, but I am pretty successful. I work as a programmer. I think that's pretty great. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> No, so I, uh, I, I work as a programmer. I work at GitHub. That's almost like working. I had a joke. I was going to like bust it out right now. All right, I work at GitHub. It's awesome. It's almost like working at Microsoft. <laughs> I co-wrote a book. Uh, people buy it. They say nice things about it on Twitter. I speak at conferences a lot. I have an open source project that a lot of people use. So really, if you think about it, I'm astonishingly successful. When I was 25, all of this would have seemed like science fiction to me. At 25, my biggest life accomplishment was that I could type pretty quickly in English and in French, and I did, as a secretary in France, where I typed up, uh, typed up dictated reports using itty-bitty cassette tapes and a foot pedal. I had spent the entire previous decade failing at basically everything. And it wasn't that nice, inspiring kind of failure that they write about in those pop psychology books where you can take that failure and transmute it into success. No, it was the stupid, pointless kinds of failure where at the end of it, you're like, wait, you wasted two years of your life studying to be a mime? <laughs> well, it's not like I did it on purpose. But yes, yes, I did. I also spent four years trying to get into the top uh, circus school in Europe um, they didn't take me. So let's talk about failure. Uh, I'm using the word in the very basic sense of attempting something and then not getting the outcome that you hope for. Now, there are a lot of ways of failing, and today I'm going to talk about three that I am very well versed in. The first is failing to even get started in the first place. The second is getting a really good start, but then fizzling out. And the third is failing to quit when you're doing something that is not conducive to your success. Failing to start is also known as procrastination. The uh, research on procrastination says that there are three main reasons why people might procrastinate, and it's different for different people. The first is value. You have to value the activity or the outcome of that activity. If you don't, it's gonna be really hard to muster the willpower necessary to uh, even get started. The second is what they call future discounting. Now, this is a thing uh, that is particularly uh, difficult for people who are impulsive, where the current, the now, feels more real, more concrete, more valuable, more important than the future, which might be a little bit distant, might be a little bit uncertain. So a payoff today, even if it's very small, might feel very, very tempting uh, compared to even a big payoff somewhere in the future. And then there's expectancy. This is about our expectations of success. If we have doubts about our ability to achieve something, it makes it a lot easier to put off doing that thing. And this is the one that I want to talk about today because this is the one that I struggle with the most. So the most helpful thing that I've found to combat this particular type of procrastination is to reframe the definition of success in this context. So for example, instead of thinking about what I hope to accomplish, I will think about the actual, literal, concrete steps that I am going to take, and then I deliberately lower my expectations for the outcome of those steps. So for example, last year around uh, Thanksgiving, I started learning Korean. And one of the first things that I did was I signed up for a website called italki.com, hoping to find a tutor that I could work with on a regular basis. And what happened was absolutely nothing for like three months. I procrastinated with abandon because just the thought of getting in a video hangout with someone, uh, some stranger in a language where I can't even rub two words together, it just boggled my mind. I didn't have any confidence that I could be successful. 
And when I realized what was going on, I reframed what it would mean to be successful. Instead of finding a great tutor, I was simply going to schedule and complete 10 different lessons with 10 different tutors in four weeks. Specifically, every single lesson could be awful. I could learn absolutely nothing, and this would be a resounding success. So I did. And here's the thing. Only eight lessons were awful. Two of the tutors were actually pretty great, and I still meet with them every week. So to combat this failure of expectancy, what I do is I lower my expectations as far as they will go until the only thing that matters is showing up, even just barely. Failing to continue. This is something that we see a lot around New Year's with New Year's resolutions. Um, this is almost an institutionalized form of failure. We start ambitiously on January 1st, and then our enthusiasm begins to flag, our willpower gets depleted, we skip a few workouts, we eat a few cookies by mid-February. It's basically over. I keep doing this, not at New Year's, just all the time. <laughs> Every single time I have this grand idea in my head about just how much I can change things up all at once, and it is never sustainable. And that big idea is usually pretty vague, so I find myself spending a lot of energy consciously monitoring my behavior on a day-to-day -day basis to see whether it matches up against this idea that I have. And, you know, sometimes it does, but most of the time it doesn't, which means that I'm failing, which further saps my motivation, and it's all just kind of miserable. So for the past few years, what I've been doing is I've been focusing on making changes that are very, very small and very, very specific. And then to make it even more likely that I'm going to succeed in making this laughably small change, I lean into evolutionary psychology. So in evolutionary terms, we are driven by an extraordinarily complex calculus that happens across three different axes. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain, and we reduce energy expenditure. These are the trade-offs that are constantly happening, but they are happening outside of our conscious control. So what I want to do is I want to come up with a small, specific change that is at the very least a little bit enjoyable so that I'm not triggering my pain avoidance subroutine. And then I want to remove as much friction as possible because basically I want something that is going to be, it's, I want to make it easier to do the thing than to not do the thing. So imagine that you have decided to make a healthy change. You're going to become a little bit healthier. healthier. Specifically, you are going to do something about how you eat. Now, you do your research on the internet, you've got the paleo folks on one side, the vegans on the other, everyone else in between, they seem to not agree on anything except maybe two things. Vegetables are healthy, and processed food is not. So you do some non-scientific analysis, you decide that breakfast is what you are going to change. Currently, every single day, you eat magic rainbow pirate treasure breakfast cereal, which, <laughs> which you adore, and which is loaded with sugar and stuff you can't pronounce. Now, because you adore it so much, you are not gonna go cold turkey because you know if you try to just wholesale replace this with something healthy, you are going to backslide and stuff your face. So, not a good plan. What you're gonna do instead is keep eating your breakfast cereal every morning, and in addition, you are also going to eat one serving of vegetables in the morning. And this is not a rule, this is not a goal, it's a series of experiments. And now, because it's science, failure is a part of the process. Failure is just something that tells you that your parameters are not yet right. There's too much friction, or there's not enough enjoyment. So you try roasting. Roasting is great, but it takes forever. If you roast the evening before, then it's not really great in the morning anymore. Steaming, easy, quick, but oh my gosh, it's bland. Unless you drench it in butter, but that kind of defeats the purpose. You know, veggie uh, stir fry is pretty great, but all oh, the chopping and then the washing up, it's like, it's not that great. So eventually, about three months into the process, you've got something that works. You take two handfuls of cherry tomatoes, you slice them in half, you add some pine nuts, a little bit of fresh basil, drizzle of glazed balsamic uh, vinegar, and boom. And this is not a habit. This is not something that you do unthinkingly, but when you're at home, not traveling, in your day-to-day -day routine, everything is just kind of worked out. 
about six months into the process, you realize that your pirate treasures are tasting maybe a little bit too sweet. Now, you still like them. You're not ready to give them up. But you wonder what would happen if you did half pirate treasures, half unsweetened fiber cereal. And about a year into the process, pirate treasures are what you sprinkle on your cereal on the weekends. And in, in the weekdays, you're using blueberries for flavor, and you've switched to some non-dairy milk, and you've lost five pounds. Now, this process is very personal. It's about what you find enjoyable, about what you find annoying. And it's a system, and if you are not following the system, that is not your fault. The system just isn't right yet. So failing to stop is something that we typically talk about in terms of bad habits, something you want to quit. I'm going to talk about it in terms of something that is not a habit. Uh, I did a fair amount of research on the internet uh, to prepare for this talk. I read a lot of articles about failure. And overwhelmingly, I came across this sentiment that winners never quit and quitters never win, which is just wrong, first of all. And also really harmful if you come to believe it. If I have learned anything in my life, it's that try, try again can be terrible advice. Persistence is good, but context matters. Persistent is a lot like scaling. You take a small disaster and you scale it, and now you have a big disaster. And I have learned this so many times in my life, and I've learned it over and over again, and recently I have learned it again harder with exorcism. So I started exorcism in uh, 2013 on a whim, and it was meant to address a number of different things, but if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, the main motivator was laziness. I was doing this work, you know, 10 minutes every day, and it was kind of annoying, um, so I wanted to not have to think about it, so I wrote a little app, and then within weeks, I had replaced my easy, kind of annoying 10 minutes with hours and hours every day of difficult, challenging, emotionally taxing work in addition to my day job. Now, my biggest mistake with exorcism was that I took every issue, every PR, every suggestion, every complaint, and I added it to my to-do list. And everything had equal priority. Now, persisting under these circumstances was not a smart thing to do, but I did for years. And it negatively affected my physical health, my mental health, my bank account, my day job, and my relationships. And I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And eventually, I kind of stopped. I staunched the bleeding. And I did two things to do that. First, I stopped actively maintaining the project. I didn't kill it. There were other maintainers dealing with things. But I mostly, I just turned off all my Git notifications, uh, GitHub notifications, and I didn't respond to any issues or merge any PRs or do any sort of customer you know, complaint response stuff or even answer emails. And the second thing that I did um, was uh, that I started learning about strategy, what it actually is and how to make better decisions. And then I brought two more people onto the core team of exorcism to redesign the product experience and the product strategy from scratch. And now, on exorcism, we are solving exactly one problem. We don't have this massive equal priority to-do list. We are solving one problem. Exorcism will not survive if we can't figure out how to scale mentorship. Mentorship has to be interesting, it has to be rewarding, it has to be fun, it has to have zero hassles. So that's what we're working on. Now, I don't actually have any pithy advice when it comes to how to quit doing something that is not conducive to your success because I still don't know how to do it. But what I can do is reassure you that winners absolutely quit. They quit when something is harmful. They quit when something is wasteful. They quit when something is past its time. They quit when something is okay but not really helping. They even quit when something is great but something else is better. And failure hurts. It is painful. There is no getting around that. But I think that there are some things that we can do to mitigate that pain just a little bit and make failure a little bit less costly. And the first thing is do lots of experiments. Try lots of Korean tutors. Try lots of variations on your vegetable prep. And this isn't to introduce this amazing amount of variation and variety in your life. It's really just to uncover a handful of things that really do work for you. And second, 
Make those experiments really small. Maybe don't try to get into the top circus school for four years. Maybe just take a trapeze class on the weekend. Maybe don't put all your life savings into a startup idea you had last week. Maybe time box it to two hours every week. And third, know when your experiments fail. Know what the criteria are for quitting. Under what circumstances might you not eat vegetables every morning? Know what your exit strategy is. With exorcism, I had no strategy, much less an exit strategy. I never asked myself, under which circumstances would it be a good idea to simply kill the project, which I'm not gonna do. So with these things, I think that it is possible to fail with not maybe grace, but less disastrous results. Thank you.